Welcome back to my YouTube channel, everyone. Listen, if you're new here and we're just meeting for the first time, my name is Brandon. I'm a chef here in Silicon Valley. I post videos weekly, okay? Every week, new video. So let's go. I have a ton of value on my page. Check out my YouTube page, scroll down. I've got a ton of juicy content. So if you're an upcoming chef, a new chef, a home cook, an avid home cook, or if you just wanna have more knowledge in the kitchen, hit that subscribe button. Smash that like, okay? And make sure you turn on your post notifications so you never miss another video, okay? And we're gonna jump right in. Now, listen, there's two things. As a chef, I have definitely had my share, fair share of chocolate chip cookies. I'm also trained in baking and pastry. Now, today I am gonna share my secret recipe for chocolate chip cookies. And it's not a secret. All the information is out there. The only thing you're gonna get from me today is my tips and tricks for making the best absolute cookie on the planet. Now, I usually don't make videos like this because you know, I, uh, there's 3,000 chocolate chip cookie recipes out there. But what differentiates mine from everybody else's? Well, the fact that I've made a million cookies in my career for large and small scale. And the thing is, is I've also tasted my fair share of cookies. Okay, but we ain't gonna tell nobody about that. There's two things that I like to do with chocolate chip cookies that absolutely change the game for me. One of them is browning the butter, and as you're browning the butter, you're gonna add milk powder, okay? This gives it an umami flavor like you never believe in a dessert. I I'm telling you right now, it, trust me, it's worth it. So if you don't have milk powder, make sure you add it to your Amazon cart right now. Matter of fact, I'll leave a link down in the description of which one I actually like to use, but I think this is really important. So think, and the reason, and let me explain to you why I like to add milk powder. MSG, monosodium glutamate, right? It is naturally found in cheese, naturally found in Parmesan especially, but guess what? When you caramelize milk powder, it has a touch of savory and yumminess. Not full MSG, but that's the idea behind it, right? So when you brown butter, what happens is, you're separating the milk solids from the fat. So it'll start boiling, you'll see a bunch of steam, then it gets to a point where it stops steaming, then it is caramelizing the milk solid. And what you wanna do from there is just bump up that flavor. So I take two scoops of milk powder and add it to the brown butter. Once I take it off the heat, it'll toast that up and you will smell, it is unbelievable. The other game changer for chocolate chip cookies that I like to do is I like to shape them differently. I don't like to use an ice cream scoop, even though you can, I like to roll it in parchment and put it in the fridge and then cut it with a knife. What I realized over time is that you get, end up with a perfect product. You end up with a perfect cookie. It spreads nicely, it's beautiful. So we'll get into that today. I'll have all the, the recipe in the description down below. It's a super easy, foolproof recipe. My three-year-old son can make it, okay? So let's jump in. Okay, so we're gonna make our brown butter real quick. And basically all you do is we want to get the equivalent of a cup for brown butter. So in a small pot, you're gonna turn your stove on to, I would say about medium heat. And now every stove is differently, but what you wanna do is you don't wanna burn it too fast, okay? And so the trick with brown butter is as soon as it starts to turn brown, that's when you take it off the heat and just let it cook just let it finish cooking and you will see it will turn dark brown. And that's what you're looking for. And especially in these chocolate chip cookies, it just develops so much more flavor. All right, so as it starts to bubble, what I wanna do is I wanna stir it. So that way no milk solids get stuck to the bottom. But we're almost there. So now we're at the point where the butter starts to separate from the milk. When you get to this point, you don't wanna leave it. And then I'm gonna show you the pro tip here. So what we're gonna do is uh, before this is starts to turn brown. I want you to know I have my measuring cup set up and then we have the pro tip here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add two tablespoons of milk powder, okay? And what this is gonna do is bump up the brown butter flavor, okay, in here. Now this is this is a trick, but you don't need to do this, um, but it, it really does add to the uh, flavor of these chocolate chip cookies we're gonna make. All right, look, look where we're at here. You see how this is nice and foamy? Not quite brown yet, but we're right there. So we can we know all the moisture's cooking, all the moisture's cooked out, and now it's starting to cook the milk solids that are left over. So what we want to do from here is keep stirring. Here we're good. You can see it's turning brown. Now we want to take it off of the heat and just let it hang out. Okay. So you'll see it has that nutty brown look. It's still light brown. 
but it's not dark yet. What we want to do at this point is just let it hang out. Okay. From there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two tablespoons of milk powder. And now you want to stir this in real quick. Okay. And you'll see it'll start to come up. Now, remember, this is still really hot, but if you were to do this in the beginning, it would just burn. Here we go. See that? Perfect. Perfect. Make sure you whisk that in and you have very flavorful brown butter. Okay. And we're, remember, we're still leaving this in the pan. Okay. This still needs to continue to get brown, but we can set this aside now. Once we reach the color that we like, we can pour it into a container. All right. So I think it's important to take a look at this. It's beautiful and nice and dark brown. This is what we want. It's not burnt. Okay. It's beautifully brown and we're going to pour it into our measuring cup. Now make sure it's not boiling. Okay. You don't want any melted plastic. Now, this pan doesn't have a lip, so I gotta be really careful when I pour. But uh, basically, I just wanna get to one cup. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour out half and then I'm gonna stir it back around again. So that way I for sure get those milk solids. Okay, so we have a little bit extra than a cup. Okay, but we want one cup exactly liquid measure, okay? Not dry measure. One cup exactly liquid measure. And then we need to let this cool. So let's let's do that. Okay, we're gonna jump right in here. One thing, uh, at the in the restaurant, I would use Valrona. I'm a big fan of Valrona, but I wanna make this easily accessible for everybody else. So I'm using Giardelli. I highly advise to get a good chocolate, okay? Now this is a semi-sweet baking chocolate, but you're also gonna wanna get some chocolate chips, okay? So you can use regular chips, but then I saw these super cookie chips that I wanted to check out. So I'm going to use these and they're actually pretty cool looking. I have some right here. They look a little bit different than a regular chocolate chip is what I, and that's, that's kind of what I like, especially because I think regular chocolate chips are a little overrated. I think they look too much like a store-bought cookie. So I like to use a mixture of both chocolate chip, chocolate chips and also some hand cut chocolate or broken chocolate. I love the texture. Anyway, without further ado, let's jump right in. So first things first, you're going to need your ingredients. Before you start or push play, go scale everything out. Get everything organized. Get all your mise en place ready, okay? If not in containers and already measured out, at least have all the ingredients laid out so you're ready to go. This is a trick that we use in the industry. It's called mise en place. And it's very important to have all your ingredients ready to go. Now, if you're at your house, I totally understand. But um, in a restaurant, for sure, you wanna have, we call it a mise kit. So another pro tip is, uh, you know, there's a ton of recipes I saw online that say, oh, use a little bit of cake flour, pastry flour, all purpose flour. No, listen, I have got the solution for you. The difference between bread flour, all purpose flour, and cake or pastry flour is the protein content. That's all you need to know. Think about chewiness, okay? So when people say mix, bread flour with the cake flour, it makes no sense to me because that's what all-purpose flour is. All-purpose flour is a mix of the two. It's 50-50. It gives you a balanced flour, right? So we're there. For chocolate chip cookies, what I actually like to do is forget about using cake flour, forget about using bread flour. I like to use all-purpose flour and then a percentage of whole wheat flour. Now this is the whole wheat kernel ground, okay? And this, what I feel like adds more texture to the chocolate chip cookie. What's really important is just get regular whole wheat flour. Do not get stone ground. Do not get, you know, the organic stuff from the farmer's market. It'll have too much oat bran in it. You want something that's super fine and lightly brown. Okay. So two cups of all purpose flour, one cup of whole wheat flour, and the recipe will be down in the description. So we have that. Now, listen, some people like to sift. Some people don't like to sift. If you got time, Go for it. If I was in a restaurant, I would sift. I'm at my house, so I'm not gonna worry about it. First things first, what we're gonna do is we are going to start with our eggs. I usually have them pre-cracked, but what, what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how, how I do this. So always crack on a flat surface, then go in. So we're going two eggs and one yolk, okay? Crack on a flat surface and then go in. Now for, you can go on the bowl, but what I realize is it's much easier to just crack on a flat, hard surface. So we have our two whole eggs and one yolk. Okay, we're gonna mix this up, get them nice and scrambled. Now here's my pro tip. You can do this however you want, but just remember that you don't want the cookies to taste greasy. Now I think that's really important. So what I like to do is just mix up the brown butter, okay? All those nice milk solids. And I like to do this part first. I know this sounds crazy, but that way the, you know, it, it's more like of an emulsified dough 
and it's not, it's not too greasy, I think it's important to add the liquids first, you know, like get the liquids uh, emulsified together. A lot of people um, will cream it. A lot of people will just melt the butter, soften the butter, whatever you want to do. But the savory chef in me loves to do it this way. So that way, if you look, the egg holds the fat. I think this is imperative to getting a nice cookie. Here we have a mixture of light brown sugar and regular white granulated sugar. Recipe down below, so make sure you have that ready. And then at this point, we're just adding that. It's a one cup and one cup, because you know we like it easy around here. And you'll notice I'll have to switch here. So I'll go from the whisk, that brown sugar, make sure it's packed, okay? Make sure it's packed in the cup. Okay, here we go, look at this. You see? Looking good so far. Okay, next step is we're gonna set this aside and then to our flour, I'm gonna add teaspoon of salt, teaspoon of baking soda. It's okay, grab that, grab that same whisk. Listen, you can, you're more than welcome to do whatever you want. Uh, you can sift your flour, you don't have to sift your flour. I just like to do this number. So I'll just mix it up, make sure everything's mixed and incorporated. So we have that aside. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the chocolate and we're gonna split the vanilla bean. It's a um, super easy recipe. One cup of chocolate chips and one cup of chocolate bar. Okay, now it is warm here in California, so I can tell that this chocolate is, um, you know, <laughs> on the verge of melting. Now you can honestly break this up with your hands, but hey, listen, I like to use my chef knife any chance I get. What I'm gonna do, I just wanna be very careful with how I do this. Very important, make sure your knife is not wet. Trust me, you'll thank me later. Okay, and all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna crunch straight down, get nice chips, big chunks, big chunks. Okay, we're just looking for a cup. I'll save the rest for my wife. Try to get as big chunks as possible, and uh, I always save one for my wife, so that way, you know, she loves me forever. So we have one cup of the super chocolate chip, and then we're gonna take one cup of the chocolate chunks. Look at these chunks. Tell me you don't want these in your cookies. And, t and trust me, you want them this big. You want them big and obnoxious. All right, what I'm gonna do is just level that out. Boom. Okay, one more thing. You're more than welcome to use vanilla bean paste, vanilla bean extract, but on all honesty, I have Tahitian vanilla bean, which is like the creme de la creme. So I'm gonna use the actual vanilla bean. I just feel like you get the purest form of vanilla with this. The choice is yours, but I prefer vanilla bean over extract anytime. Now that that part of our life is over, it gets really easy from here. So we have our wet mixture and we have our dry mixture. Just gonna whisk this up. We wanna kind of beat up that vanilla bean. Oh my God. If you could smell this right now, game changer. And listen, don't throw this away. Do not throw this away. Put this back in the vanilla bean jar. Now look at this. You see how it's like not broken, but we have everything and it looks nice and creamed, but it's really not. It's just kind of emulsified. And trust me, you'll see the, the end product. You'll see the end result. And I'm telling you, it's a game changer. Now remember everybody, clean as you go. It gives you less anxiety. You'll be a happier person. Okay, switch to a rubber spatula. And then this part gets really easy, okay? So here we go. This in. All right, start in the middle and just keep rotating the bowl. All good. And then I think what's really important is taking consideration, like, I don't know, a lot of people say, don't over mix the cookie, blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what, dude? It's totally fine. Just in, all you're looking to do is incorporate the flour. And if you use a stand mixer, then yes, you run the risk of over mixing it. But at the same time, like if you're doing it hand like by hand, like I am right now, you kind of, <laughs> There's so much fat in here, um, you know, that you're not gonna really over mix it that much. But what I like to do, as soon as I get like halfway here, okay, you'll see, look, here we go, see this? I'm like halfway, okay? We're not 100% we're not there. Before it becomes too glutinous, throw your chips in, okay? Here is the part that I like the most. In the restaurant, we would definitely use the stand mixer, but I'm doing this at my house. So I like to get my hand in here. This is the best tool. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna gently fold these in. You can use your spatula too. Don't be scared, but I'm really gonna fold these in, make them super nice. What I, what I don't wanna do, over mix it at this point and streak the batter, or not the batter, what am I talking about? Streak the dough, meaning melting the chocolate with my hand and then it melts in the dough, no bueno. Look at this, see how it comes together? Oh, this is gonna be amazing. 
Look at, oh my God, if you could smell this with that real vanilla bean, the brown butter, beautiful big chocolate chunks. And uh, it's taking every single bone in my body not to want to eat this. But we are, look at this. Look at that. Boy. Tell me you don't want to eat this whole thing. Don't eat raw eggs. No, I'm not playing. All right, and so now I'm gonna take you to the next step. Let's go. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the next pro tip. You wanna get some parchment paper, and then what we're gonna do is we are gonna take this cookie dough and we're gonna split it into three. Now, you can just eyeball it. I'm gonna use the scale because I am uh, I'm a perfectionist. What I'm gonna do is I already measured this out. You know, you should have around 450 grams of cookie. So what you're gonna do is just make it into a log. Okay, don't forget these little chocolate chips now. Okay, just like this. Make it into a nice cylinder. Remember, you end up, you have a circle. You, if you start with a circle, you end up with a circle. So what I'm doing with the food scale here is I'm just, you know, I'm just tearing it and then basically taking what I need as I'm weighing it. So I'm getting the pro appropriate amount. Again, you can just eyeball this. You don't have to be a perfectionist like me. It's just I grew up in the restaurant industry. So for me, it's all about standard procedures. This is also great if you, you know, for you and your family, if, you know, you, you don't have to cook all the cookies at once, you know? So anyway, what I was doing here is I was just, pretend the scale is underneath. I was just taking the cookie dough, the, um, the appropriate amount. And that's what, that's just because I want it to be equal. You don't have to do this. As the chocolate chips start to fall, it's totally fine. Just press them back into the dough. So we're gonna take this and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna roll this up, okay? Okay, roll it up, roll it up. And listen, this doesn't have to be perfect. You just want it to be a cylinder, okay? And then what I like to do is take it, squeeze and twist, okay? And then we're gonna drop this right in the fridge. You're gonna start here. Roll, roll as best as you can. Okay, this is for the beginner if you've never done this before. Okay, then from here, take it to aluminum foil, okay? Because aluminum foil will set better. But look, I like to squeeze just like this, okay? then. If you roll it in the aluminum foil, this will give you a little bit more leeway, okay? This will help you build a better circle. See that? And then always make sure you squeeze the sides. You have to squeeze the sides. If you don't compress it, it's, it won't come out perfect. And so for the aluminum foil, I just twist the ends. What we're gonna be able to do from here is after this is chilled, we'll be able to take a knife and cut straight down to get circles. And the reason why I like them like this is because they cook perfectly. When you have a heaping scoop, right, that big circle, you can get a good consistency, but what you end up having to do is kind of press the cookie down a little bit. There's nothing wrong with that. I just noticed, I actually learned this technique from um, the pastry chef at Hotel Bel Air back in the day, Chef Jen Chen, if you're out there, thank you. I saw this technique and I'm like, you know what, that is genius. One, because, you know, it's secure. And anytime you want cookies, boom, 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 you can cut them. When you have a ball in the freezer, it takes up too much space when you have 200 of them, right? But this is a good way to go. And you get perfect cookies every single time. Not to mention, you get parts of the chocolate chip that get cut and it, it just adds a different kind of oomph to the cookie. You know what I'm saying? It, it's really nice. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna come back to this in about uh, 20 minutes, okay? Let's go. All right, so what you wanna do is you wanna let this chill. All right, here we go. And the reveal. So everything's firmed up. Now, long-term storage, you can throw in the freezer, but in all honesty, I just keep it in the fridge. It'll last for quite a while. What you're gonna need is a, a half sheet pan with a piece of parchment and I like to take it an extra step. And what I will do is I will spray that just to be safe. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the, cut the cookies. What you wanna do is cut straight down, okay? Now watch your fingers here, okay? But I'm using a serrated knife. We want nice big chocolate chip cookies. You can cut these smaller, but for me, we're going big. Go big or go home. Now, if any chocolate chips fall out, it's totally fine. All you gotta do is press them back in, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna place these cookies onto the cookie tray. And I'm doing them staggered so they don't, they don't touch edges. And I got one little, this is gonna be the little tester. I'm just gonna put that to the side. It's all good. So anyway, that's what we have here. And don't worry about this one, but we're gonna go right into the oven with these. Okay, preheat your oven, 375, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop the, drop the temperature down to 350 once we get these in.
Ooh, yes. Look at that. Okay, this is the most important part. You wanna tap. Oh, these are gonna be great. And also, what we wanna do is season with a little sea salt right now. Now, depending on if you like your cookies chewy or crispy, is on how long you're gonna leave them in the oven for. So, listen, at this point, what you wanna do is, I, I like to tap the bottle, bottom so the cookie settles. Then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and um, switch it to a cooling rack. And uh, basically that looks like this right here. And that way the cookies can cool properly. Oh my goodness, these are amazing. Oh, these are gonna be great. Now these are too hot to eat right now, but I, I wanna talk about this beautiful crust on the outside and how you can kind of see the chocolate these were the end pieces, but these ones are the prized possession. And these are actually kind of big, but there's two things that you wanna do. As soon as they come out of the oven, you wanna tap them, that way it settles. And also, you wanna hit them with a little flaky salt. The only thing that really, truly flaky, flaky salt should be used for is a chocolate chip cookie. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> I would argue that that's pretty much it. Other than that, there's so much other sea salt that tastes really good. What you wanna do is you wanna let these cool down a little bit and actually in the restaurant, what we used to do is um, for dessert, uh, as soon as the guests were finished with their entree, what we would do then is we would blast off the cookies so they were nice and warm in the perfect temperature when they received their uh, dessert, right? And I'm gonna say the perfect temperature is a little bit above room temp right under hot tap water temp. So like 120, 125 degrees, I'm telling you it's the best temperature to eat a chocolate chip cookie. And um, I like mine soft and chewy on the inside, so I left them a little bit underbaked, um, but you know, perfectly cooked. So to get a perfectly soft, chewy cookie, all you have to do is undercook it just a touch. And you don't have to guess. You can use a thermometer, okay? And you can temp it. And about 185, 190 is a perfect temperature for a soft, chewy cookie, okay? But you know what? Hey, while I got you here, I want to open one of these bad boys up while it's nice and hot. So let's choose this one. This one looks really good. Oh, ooh, look at that. Nice, beautiful. Now, it's too hot to eat, but I wanted to show you the inside. Look at, look at this, nice and soft, crispy on the outside. Look at that, beautiful, crispy on the outside. Boy, thick with a double C, all right? And I like chocolate chip cookies like this, okay? And one, you're not using regular chocolate chips, even though you can, so it looks like an artisan cookie, all right? You see the nice cracks on the top? This is what you're looking for. So listen, I gotta admit, my inspiration for cookies like this came from Last Crumb. I don't know if you guys had the opportunity to try Last Crumb cookies, but they are absolutely amazing. 10 out of 10 recommend, maybe not for every week, but what I really like about their cookies is they were really like thicker and much more voluptuous and uh, savory. Okay, if you made it this far, thanks again for watching. Listen, I, I really appreciate it. Make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you hit that, those post notifications. Smash the subscribe if you're already, already there. But I'm telling you right now, YouTube is my favorite platform and I'm gonna continue to post on here every single week. So if you got value out of this video, please help a brother out, okay? Like this video, make sure you share it with a friend that needs to see it, okay? Have your mom make these chocolate chip cookies for you. I'm telling you. Extreme pro tip, share it on IG. Oh, speaking of, if you're not following me on TikTok or Instagram, make sure you follow me over there. All that stuff will be linked down in the description below. Give me a follow and do me one favor if you made it this far. Let me know in the comments what number like you are, okay? Let me know in the comments what number like you are. See you next week.